I'm Danny Dyer. Playing hard, men and acting tough has been my bread and butter. But now I've got a new role. I'm going to be tracking down some of the most feared men in the country on both sides of the law. I'm going to find out what makes them tick, how they got their fearsome reputations, and why they're considered some of Britain's deadliest men. Paramilitary terrorist, loyal friend, suspected killer. At one time, Sam McCrory was Britain's most wanted man. I'm a good friend, I'm a bad fucking enemy. This notorious ex terrorist from Northern Ireland now lives in exile. I want to find out what happens to a terrorist when they've lost the cause they're fighting for. I'm not proud of what I've done, but it had to be done. I was down to it. They say one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. I'm gonna find out for myself. I've come to the picturesque seaside town of Ayr in Scotland to meet Sam McCrory, an ex-paramilitary terrorist from the war-torn streets of Belfast. The Troubles was a 25-year battle between Catholics and Protestants for control of Northern Ireland. With the British Army stuck in the middle, nearly 4,000 people were killed. They have a bloodlust, and some of them certainly appear to be psychotic killers. Paramilitary groups from both religions were involved in everything from riots to murder. They were like football casuals, but the football casuals were guns. At the age of 18, Sam was recruited into the outlawed Ulster Freedom Fighters, alleged to have killed over 100 people. These were hardline Protestants who wanted Northern Ireland to remain under British rule. They fought the Catholic IRA with a brutal violence to stop Northern Ireland from becoming part of the Irish Republic. Sam became the most ruthless and dedicated soldier of his generation and went to the ultimate lengths for what he believed in. He had a reputation for being a hands-on trigger person. There's no question about that. We were the business. That was us. There was no banner in us. I'd heard rumours that Sam was now living his life as an openly gay man. This is the first time he's ever told his story. Terrorist or freedom fighter. I'm gonna meet the man and make up my own mind. Sam had arranged to meet me at the end of the promenade. I don't know what to expect, to be honest with you. I never do know what to expect in these situations. The first meet's always the toughest. Sussing each other out, you know what I mean? But I don't know, you know, who he's going to be with. I don't know if he's going to be on his own. I know what I know. All I do know is that he's late. At least it's nice and open here. There's a few people about, so uh, I think I'm going to be all right. How you doing, Billy? Good to meet you, brother. Right, Tom, how are you? Pleasure, mate, yeah. Right. What a mad place to meet you. <laughs> Do you like it? It's mad, mate, I tell you. It's quite a nice little setting. I've Beautiful. Got to say. Yeah. Beautiful. So it's you're going to take on a little bit of a mission, yeah? Yeah, no problem. Let's have it. What do you want to go? Do you want to go? I don't know, mate. I'm in your hands. Go. I'm in your okay. hands. Let's go. Cool. All right, boys? All right. I'm a fucking drive. Give him a for ransom. I he was joking. This is my local town. That's a fucking brilliant wee town. Oh, you like this town? Oh, yeah. brilliant. We people yeah. and they're really, really nice, nice folk. And we're just heading up to my wee flat. I've been in it seven years. Uh, I've only got one bit of hassle. So there's two guys trying to kill me. Trying to shoot me down and save my flat one night. Okay, it's all you fucking need, don't it? Someone wanted to settle old scores with Sam after a bitter internal feud broke out in Belfast that led to him being exiled here in Scotland. It wasn't the IRA who shot at him, but someone fighting on the same side. 
Now he never gets a car to his front door and instead walks the last hundred yards. I was keen to get off the street and into the safety of his flat. Hey, I'm pal. Hey, I'm pal. Mate. Then you come, pal. Hello, mate. Nice little gaff. Nice and tidy. Get your pubian. He's bang on, he's sweeter than that. Thank God. And I was always a bit nerve wracking, you know what I mean? But actually, sweet as he's good as gold. And I feel a bit settled now. Sam had something at the bottom of his wardrobe which gave a clue to the violent life he once led. It's a Mark V. I'll stop on AK-47. Mark V, yeah? Yeah. So, so would that, would that, let's stop a bullet? Yeah. Fucking hope so, it'll work. <laughs> I'm going to say, don't really want to find just out. Just put it up over your head, yeah. There <laughs> you go. One of them ones, yeah. So you just whack that underneath your top, yeah? Yeah, that's all. God, I won't feel very confident in that if someone's going to take a shot on me. That's it. It's still going to prop her out, aren't it? You're going to go over, aren't you? Well, if I if, if really make fucking clever, they'll shoot you in the head. Yeah, mate. A mad thing to have in your house, though, isn't it? That's just a way of life. Yeah, of course. Just, it's just like there. I have a more. No. I have only more. When I'm at the Belfast, but that was in hospital. I come up on this jagger road, and my mates when I got here, put that on because mm. it was a longest feed on, mm. and I put it on, put my jacket up over it, mm. and I was that. And then I just said, take it back with you, mm. and it's fucking laying there. Mm. It's not illegal. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's fucking yeah. illegal about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course, mm. of course. Of course, naughty, that, isn't it? The struggle of the IRA has been well documented. But I'm on a journey to find out more about the other side, the loyalists who fought the IRA with a brutal terror of their own. I'm a good friend, I'm a bad fucking enemy. Sam McCrory was a gunman in the Ulster Freedom Fighters, notorious unit, C Company. But after a bit of feud with his own organisation, he now lives in exile in Scotland, and his violent past still haunts him. Two guys trying to kill me, trying to shoot me down and save my flat one night. Sam grew up in Belfast in the 70s during the height of the troubles. He was part of a lost generation, desensitised to violence after witnessing atrocities from a young age. I grew up seeing British soldiers coming into my country, right? Houses burning, buses being burnt, uh, rioting, shootings. Right, so I was about four or five. My dad was a vigilante, right? The main vigilante de area, right? To protect you from what we believe were their enemy, who was the Nationalist community, Republicans, Catholics, yeah. Nationalists. Yeah. We grew up at, at an age when you were about five or six, you went round the doors and you used to collect all the milk bottles. Because yeah. the men would have made petrol bombs that night to defend their area. Maybe a couple of men would give you a couple of bombs to go to the shop to get yourself sweets in front for doing a job. You, you were just up every day. If you weren't collecting up, you were throwing stones over the barricade. Teenagers like Sam are often sucked into political violence. Just from the knee. Yeah. We just thought Catholics were the enemy, and they thought the same as us were the enemy. Yeah. Sam and his friends were the new generation of Protestants from the Shankill Road. More militant, more dedicated, and more violent than anyone before. The IRA had the upper hand, so we decided to fight fire to fire and fight the IRA on a level battlefield, and they didn't like it. The man behind the balaclava in this old news footage is allegedly Sam McCrory. Filmed on operation for C Company in the early 90s. C Company was run by Johnny Mad Dog Adair, Sam's best friend and military commander. Together, they would turn C Company from a renegade outfit into the most feared Protestant paramilitary unit the Troubles had ever seen. Two masked gunmen walked into this pub, shouted trick or treat, and began firing indiscriminately. Catholics and Protestants had been drinking and socialising without division, and they were killed together. When the gunmen ran out of ammunition, they paused, reloaded, and began firing all over again. This brutal C Company shooting was in retaliation for an IRA bomb in the Shankill Road that killed men, women, and children. Tit-for-tat murders plagued the community. 
Many innocent people were wrongly targeted or caught in the crossfire. People will tell you, violence is wrong, right? But I once had a policeman tell me, if you believe in it, you can't take that belief away. And I had a strong belief. What I was doing was right. I didn't do it to fill my pockets for the money. I mean, I thought I'd risk my freedom and I'd risk my life. So to, to do what I've done. I mean, I, I, I'm not proud of what I've done, but it had to be done. I was dedicated to it. But Sam lived a double life. Not only did he have to fight to protect his country, he had to fight to hide his sexuality. Being gay at the time in Belfast wasn't accepted, and being a terrorist made it even worse. So are you openly gay, yeah? You are. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, what was that like in the UDR? I mean, what, what, well, that was like that was like a double life, because I found it very hard. Because see, over there, because of the political situation, the sectarian situation, gays they weren't needed. It was like here's another problem. Mm. You no, know I mean, there's enough fucking political problems. Who are these people? Mm. I think some of my close friends knew. I mean, but it was very hard to keep inside yeah, it yourself. Been, it must have been really tough. You know I mean? it, it was dead secretive. And plus, I had to watch where I was going. Of course. Because of who I was and where I was attached to. Mm. But obviously, because your tattoos and all. Mm. You know what I mean? These tattoos are symbols of Sam's political affiliations and made going out in public difficult. Being gay, I, I had to watch who was socialising me, where I was going. Mm. You know I mean? mm. Mm. Just in case somebody decided to set you up. And get you fucking banged. Mm. You know what I mean? It was the first tattoo that you had. My very first tattoo was a swift. My mm. very last tattoo was one of my dick. Is he winding me up? No. You got one on your dick? Yeah. <laughs> that <one. laughs> Fuck it. That's yeah. my very last tattoo. So <laughs> Fuck it. What is it? An anchor. 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 So when he used it, I turn and say, can I buy me anchor in? I didn't expect that. Fuck me. That's mental. Well, first impressions, obviously. He's a passionate man. You know, I've also heard he's gay as well, and I just didn't know how that was going to work. And, uh, you know, just you, just you just get images in your brain. But actually, you know, uh, he's fascinating, you know? It's early days yet, but I'm sure this guy's really going to... Um, he's really going to uh, freak me out, not in a bad way. I took some time out down the arcade to get my head together. Meeting Sam had opened up a lot of questions. Was I just another Englishman trying to understand the Irish troubles? I need to be at the top of my game because tomorrow Sam wants to take me back to Belfast to show me the streets where he grew up. Since moving to Scotland, he's only been back a handful of times and always with strict security precautions in place. The danger is real, but Sam wants to show me what he fought and nearly died for. To understand his new life today in exile, I've got to go to Belfast to see it with my own eyes. Obviously, he doesn't live there no more. He can't live there no more. He's got a lot of enemies in Belfast, and it just makes me a bit wary. I feel safe around him, but yet when we start going to Belfast, it's a whole new ball game. And I can't deny it to you. I'm scared. It's 6 a.m. the next morning and the start of our journey. Like a farmer tip. Strange feeling like I'm back home. So I, I slept like a lot, but I was waking like up and pretty excited with my stomach. For security precautions, I'll travel to Belfast separately. I often get recognised and I don't want to jeopardise the whole trip by drawing attention to him. Sam's chosen to take the ferry to avoid any hassle from the police at the airport. It's just one of these things, your past just comes back to haunt you most of the times. And as far as I'm concerned, which rightly so, I'm a, I'm a conflicted terrorist. Lots of things were racing through my mind, to be honest. I wasn't exactly looking forward to hanging out in Belfast with a film crew and an ex-paramilitary terrorist.
As Sam gets closer to Paul, he's more worried about being stopped by the police. Even though he's doing nothing wrong, he could still be detained for hours under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. And just when he thinks he's made it on board safely, disaster strikes. Whoa! Oh, oh. Don't sell him it. Don't, don't. I take it off you. Take the camera off you. Sam's been recognised by a policeman and stopped. Have you any identification with you at all? Yeah. Just timed it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you very much. I thought I recognised the jug, that was all. <laughs> it's it's been a while, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? It has, it's been a while. I thought I recognised the face. <laughs> I know, I'm doing right, just right, selling it, Sammy. Just to satisfy my curiosity. Ah, of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah? Thanks a lot. Hello, you over filming? Just a day. Just a day. Come up back tomorrow. The mini hassle? Nah. Just gonna do my talking about doing that set. Back home. No problem. Right, we'll let you get on, gentlemen. Thanks a lot, sir. See, See ya. Thank you. You notice my face and I'm wearing sunglasses. You look at that photo. That was me ten years ago. Look at me now. A further shaved head now. I've a tattoo on my face, sir. Um, no tattoos. But he's still near me. So he's like, strange, isn't it? After being stopped, the reality of what he's doing hits home. If I'm born to be shot dead in Belfast, I'm not going to fucking drown the sea. And that's just fact of life. These people don't frighten me. They don't worry me. I don't give them a second thought. So Belfast is a long distant memory for me. I have good memories and I have bad memories. Accompanying Sam on the trip is Dougie, a good friend and associate. Well, I don't anticipate any problems, but uh, obviously Sammy's uh, various death threats. But despite what might lie ahead, Sam's in high spirits. <laughs> no, no chance. If I was caught with a firearm, I would get 25 years in prison. I've landed in Belfast. And on my way from the airport, the cab driver shows me the mean streets where Sam learned how to be a soldier. So, Donnie, first time to Belfast, yeah? Yes, mate. Yep. Yep, never been here before. Oh, you like it? I feel quite safe in your cab anyway, yeah? <laughs> Good man. I haven't that's lost what, the passenger yet. That's what I like to hear. Cabbies have their own place in history in Belfast. It was often an easy way to tell a person's religion, so driving the streets was like running the gauntlet. Say maybe the IRA phoned a Protestant taxi firm to pick someone up, then they killed them. Really? You know, so there was many taxi drivers killed. I, I'm from a Shankill Road, so I couldn't go into the falls and have a pint of beer. OK. Even though there's no way of telling the difference, you're not going to put yourself in a position yeah. where you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Everyone knows everyone. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. The Protestant Shankill Road and Catholic Falls Road were the main hotspots for sectarian violence. It was one of the two roughest roads in Western Europe. The falls was the other one, the running parallel. It was a war zone, frankly. I mean, there was incidents every single day whether it was shootings, attempted shootings, whether it was bombings, whether it was hijackings, whether it was riots, you had everything there. Back on the boat, there's still time for last minute planning. See when we get to Belfast, right. I'm gonna show you where we're gonna go, okay? This is a peace line here. It's Catholic, and the bottom part of it's Protestant. North Belfast was called the Murder Triangle. So it was. The coats are trying their shape and there was that much killings. It was a very, very bad area for both religions. Catholics and Protestant committing murders. There's a bit of history in there. Yep. Belfast's history. Who would have thought? Folded up in there, three and a half thousand lives. Ah. Uh -huh. Once in Belfast, Dougie has made preparations so nothing will happen to Sam. I don't see anything running up the high street with an AK-47, but it would be a crowd rule run about Sammy, and that's where the danger would start, so I'll get people ready to move him. 
within five minutes. I'm hearing firsthand that the potential death threat is not exaggerated. So do you think that the likes of Skelly would be welcomed back here? No. Never? Never. Not all of what's, what's happened. You know, definitely not. Them boys will just have to stay away. And anyone who left Belfast to go with Johnny Adair and all, they've made a decision and they'll not be welcomed back. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was a young lad who went along with him and he was told he was safe to come back and he came back and they killed him. So that's a message to the rest of them. Yes. You know what will happen? Fuck it out. I know he's a bit paranoid about coming back here, obviously, for obvious reasons. Now, whether I'll be a target because I'm with him, I don't know. I don't know. I'm in Belfast waiting for the arrival of ex-terrorist Sam Skelly McCrory. I've already found out that he's not welcome here. Anyone who left will not be welcome back. I've got to say, I've, I, I quite like Belfast. It's been nice for me. I don't feel under threat at all, but... You know, bringing Sam into the mix, that changes things a little bit, I know that. Sam had already been stopped in Scotland. Is there any identification with you at all? And I didn't know if he'd made it over yet in one piece. Just intrigued to see how his journey was, you know? I'm sure it weren't as smooth as mine. Here he is, I think. Here he is, yeah. Hello, man. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing, sunshine? Okay, how was your journey? Oh, mine was sweet as a nut. How was your journey? Fucking shocking. <laughs> Don't be surprised. Within the next 24 hours, we'll get stopped in North and West Belfast. You think so? Well, they expect me to be in that area making a documentary because it's about my life. They're on us today. Yeah. I'll well, just jump in the motor then and slip off lightly. <laughs> no on, problem. With no time to lose, we hop into the car with blacked out windows and head off. Great guy, just watch it. I'm an outlaw. That, that's one, the next one. To the right, right. The first thing Sam wants to do is something he's never done before in his life. Openly cross the religious divide between Protestant and Catholic neighborhoods. This, this is what the fight it is a gate. So this is me in a loyalist area, and I'm now getting to a Republican area. And this road was used on numerous occasions by both sides of religious divide for killings, bombings, whatever went on through, through the phalanx. They said this is why they erected these gates. So that, and they used to close at 7 o'clock at night so you could get through here. Fucking crazy, isn't it? To keep the two religious communities separated and prevent sectarian murders, Huge concrete walls were built, known as peace lines. Some are 40 feet high and over three miles long. You really understand how, how much hatred there is when you have to build a wall to separate, to separate human beings at the end of the day. You know, it's, it's pretty drastic measures. And it's only when you see it and how high it is is when it really hits home, you know? Sad state of affairs. I should have taken stupid things down the banner. Right? But I, I, I'm quite enjoying this. So, you know. The craziness of the whole political situation was becoming clear to me. Sam is a product of his environment, but if he'd been born on the other side of the fence, it would be a different story. It does here was nationalist and Republican. And I was born here. So as you can see, I found I'd be born 50 yards that way, and I'd probably be in the IRA. So I'd fight the British. It's high close. It's still early in the morning, and Sam decides it's safe to visit his old stomping ground. This estate was the power base for C Company the most feared paramilitary unit the Troubles had ever witnessed. Different memories coming here. I actually don't even give it much thought anymore. But uh, this was my old stomping ground, this place here. This was the heart and the base of 2nd Battalion C Company. But it, sadly it is no more. It used to be our office, now a house, but it used to be our office. 
This is where everything took place. <coughs> Ordinary street demonstrations, military operations. This was it all here. In the early 90s, the area was heavily patrolled by the army, but it wasn't enough to stop C Company from allegedly murdering as many as 100 Catholics. The men in the black balaclavas ruled these streets of West Belfast, and the man in charge was Johnny Mad Dog Adair, the feared military commander of C Company. Scully and Johnny were extremely close. I mean, they, each of them knows where the other secrets are buried. Sam and Johnny's friendship was unbreakable, and together they would take their political struggle to an unprecedented level of brutality. Johnny Adair will always be my close and loyal best friend in the world. I will never, ever betray him. He's my friend, and I love him to death. Sam's other close friend was Steve McKeague, AKA Top Gun, who died of a drug overdose in 2000. He was a dedicated loyalist, okay? A good friend, and a dedicated loyalist, and a cracking member of 2nd Battalion C Company. They had an award ceremony for Volunteer of the Year, and McKee used to win it constantly in the 1990s. He was one of the most ruthless assassins the Troubles has produced, but Skelly would have been up there with him. It was just quite sad that not around anymore. It was dawning on me how important friendship and loyalty was to Sam. He was even prepared to kill or be killed for it. Although there is peace now, many people are still coming to terms with the past. Their history is painful and not easy to forget. And I got the impression that for Sam, this trip had unearthed some painful memories of his own. At the age of 27, Sam's career as a paramilitary terrorist came to an abrupt end on a bridge in South Belfast. It was also nearly the end of his life. I was caught at 10 to 7 in the morning with an AKM assault rifle, an SMG double magazine, and a Bernie 9 mil 20 shot double magazine, and a sledgehammer going on a military operation. Where was you on your way to? We were heading into West Belfast, National Republic of West Belfast. We had a target to eliminate. Oh, you was on your way to a t OK, 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 gotcha. The authorities believe Sam's unit was on the way to assassinate a high-level IRA figure. After a tip-off, they were ambushed by a SWAT team armed to the teeth and prepared to use deadly force to stop them. I remember getting the ridge of the bridge and I seen the fucking police car, and it was parked across the bridge. They started firing on a car, and we jumped out the pond of the car to run back away, and the car was sliding along the bridge, and all the bullet holes were in the side of the car, and all you heard, and they fired, they fired 33 rounds, a hacker and cop rounds. The driver gets shot in the leg, one of my arm men gets get knocked down, so it was just basically fucking chaos in that bridge. Really? I thought it was an all of her. Yeah, you thought that yeah. was, yeah. And more so even when it was on the ground, he was pushing the gun in the back of my head. And he was going, you're dead, you bastard, you're dead. It's a fucking story, that is fucking hell. Sam was sentenced to 16 years for conspiracy to commit murder and possession of firearms with intent to endanger life. The Crown opposed Bale because of the risk of further offences, given what he called the murderous activities of the UFF. Sam was sent here to the most secure prison in Northern Ireland, the Maze. Inside its walls were some of the most dangerous men in the country, responsible for bombings, directing terrorism and cold-blooded murder. I've heard a lot about this place. Seen a lot of it on the news. But when you actually get here, it looks so intimidating, grey, and just like, you know, we haven't been given permission to film in there, so this isn't such a bad thing, really. I don't really fancy walking about in there, you know? There was 52 people on the two wings, and I knew 40 of them. Yeah. And a lot of them were from a shanker road, here with my friends. Yeah. That was our home, so we made it our home. When you look at those prisons, they're all working class boys. Both sides, Republican lawyers, there's no fucking upper class and middle class people in jail. No. The Maze's reputation as a hellhole was a far cry from the reality of incarceration on Sam's wing. They enjoyed privileged status as political prisoners and even had conjugal rights. Sam was regularly visited each month by his partner, Harry. 
the authorities, I think, turned a blind eye to what was going on in the maze. I mean, they had everything. They had drugs. They had mobile phones. I mean, they, they had conjugal visits. They, they bribed prison officers. They could have sex with their, with their partners. All this happened. One Halloween, I think it was 1998, they had, they had a firework display. And people reported driving on the motorway past the prison saying fireworks flying into the air. This was not the top security prison that people thought it was. It was said that some of the best parties in Northern Ireland took place inside. Believe it or not, these party photos were taken inside the maze and show the summer barbecue the Protestant prisoners and their families held annually. Get your rocks up, get your rocks up, honey, check them out. I just walked into a room and there was a table and the two boys were sitting there, Skelly and Johnny, covered in tattoos, of course, and their shorts, and they looked as if they were on holiday. They could have been in Ibiza. This is probably going to sound really fucking strange. Some of my happiest moments were in there. Really? Some of my funniest times were in there. There were some good laughs. It, it, it's a shock, really. You know, it, you know, it's prison. At the end of the day, it is prison. You're losing your freedom. It's a punishment. It's uh, actually it wasn't that vibe, clearly. But these are very powerful people who still had a big sound society even behind here. Sam was a military commander inside the maze, and one of the prisoners, Secretary of State Mo Molan, visited for controversial peace talks. You can film this place up and down the two wings. You can ask anybody what the one will answer the question for his last. In 1998. Sam was released along with 428 other prisoners as part of the historic Good Friday Agreement. It was an uncomfortable moment for many in Northern Ireland, but essential for peace and reconciliation. What you did was inhuman. Try to become human again. Sam had lost seven years of his life inside the maze, and his only concern now was to spend time with his partner Harry, who was deathly ill after a car crash. He shunned the glare of the media spotlight and moved to Scotland to be with him before it was too late. I come over here and I looked after my partner. I moved here on a Sunday and I nursed him till he died the 10th of January 1999. So he died on a Sunday morning. I was in love with the guy and the guy was in love with me and uh, we worshipped each other. Death is a strange thing. I should have been used to it. I've lost that many people. But uh, I'll never forget him. I'll never ever forget that day. And yeah, he was a lovely man, he was a delightful man. And he'd give me the earth, and I'd give him the stars out of the sky. Before returning to Scotland, Sam has one last thing to do. He wants to pay tribute to his fallen comrades and friends who were killed during the Troubles. It's an awful lot of Lord, this part of the buried here. This is like their graveyard. People lost their lives in Northern Ireland during 25 years of political violence. I always find it quite, um, it's quite a moment coming to a cemetery anyway, you know, so it's always a bit, whole mood changes, it all gets a bit tense, but I mean, he's a tough guy, you know, but um, you can't help but think, you know, get a sense that he's, you know, there must be a moment for him to come over here, you know, he's sort of, I've left him to it, really. He's just wandering about looking for Top Gun's grave now. It's obviously a very emotional thing for him. You know, I don't want to question him too much, you know? Just let him get on with it. It's been a sobering journey for me. I understand now that Sam was a foot soldier in a political struggle that had spiralled out of control. Death was commonplace, and lots of innocent people were caught up in the violence. When peace eventually broke out in Northern Ireland, Sam couldn't share in it and was forced into permanent exile in Scotland, where the next chapter of his life awaited as an openly gay man. Sam McCrory was a member of a paramilitary terrorist group in the 80s and 90s, allegedly responsible for murdering as many as 100 people. In Belfast, I discovered the brutal and at times surreal environment that made him. But I still didn't know if he had any regrets about his actions or how he reconciled his violent past with his peaceful future. Sam is a complex individual. 
you know, he's definitely a tough lad. There's no two ways about that, but there's a softer side to him, you know, that I'm very curious about. Sam lives in exile amongst the fishermen and seaside calves in Scotland. He's still under death threat from enemies in Belfast and unable to benefit from a peaceful Northern Ireland, which he fought for at great personal cost. His best friend, Johnny Adair, joined Sam in 2000 and his arrival in this sleepy town caused an uproar. Even the local police don't know where in Ayrshire the mob are currently holed up, but they are worried it won't be long before they make their presence felt. Excuse me, turn that camera off. Turn the camera off. Johnny Adair lives in the next village five miles away from Sam, and I asked to meet him. These two had fought together, been to prison together, and nearly died together. But there was no one else who was closer to Sam, so close in life what made him tick. You don't knock, I just go on in. You just come in, do you? Well, I go on in, that's my best mate. You don't knock. Oh, yeah. Thanks for letting me up yeah. in your house, man. No Thank problem. you. You're welcome. No Beautiful gaff. Ah, true. Sunny true. Famous yes. for golf and then famous for Johnny at the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's yeah. nah, lovely right here, isn't it? Tiger Woods all comes to play as golf. Are you good at golf? Is he any good, Sam, or what? No, I'm not no, don't play golf. No? It's good at all the things. It's not golf. <laughs> <laughs> I know how close these two are, you know what I mean? But what was he like as a mayor, you know? It's like being married to someone. Yeah. I believe personally that you'll only ever in, in a lifetime find one true love. Mm. Like your wife, if you're in love, right? mm. and you marry her. You'll only find that once in a lifetime. But people like Sam, you'll only find, as a friend, you'll only find that once yeah, in a yeah, lifetime. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And that's a fact. That's it's a great fact. Thing. We can all say we've got hundreds of mates and all, but I, through experience, I know I've had all these mates. I had thousands of mates. But when the chips were down, when I had nothing to offer these people, the knives were out. Do you mm. understand what I mean? Mm. But with somebody, mm. see, you somebody can take you with bread or somebody can take you with butter, he'll always be there for you. Yeah. And, and that's uh, the best thing about him. Their friendship was nearly ended in 1999 when Johnny was shot at a UB40 concert. We're having an amazing time. And then this horrible song from UB40, it's a song I hate, it's called The Train Is Coming or something. All I heard was choo 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 choo. <laughs> Next thing, boom, someone came up behind me and shot me in the head. Luckily for me, it was a, a damp round, so therefore there was not enough powder in the shell actually blew my brains out, so it just went into my head and travelled up and just lodged there. That was it, just got to the hospital and lucky enough they, they, they took the round out and I was alive to fight another day. Our life was just constantly being harassed by security forces or being targeted by the Republican movement and it's it's really hard, it's not like football, yeah. I think it's where it's every Saturday, this was every night, 24-7. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. We just volunteered for operations, we, we never questioned orders that we were given. And obviously he would do mm. at, at what we did. And mm. Well, Sammy was never a man for rank. He was he was more a foot soldier than a he was more a giver than a taker. <laughs> 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 I had to keep reminding myself that I was standing in a kitchen with two of the most notorious terrorists from Northern Ireland. They've never been charged with any specific murder and were reluctant to talk to me about certain details. Legally, we can't. Legally, absolutely. Uh, I can't. No, we can't. <laughs> so we fucking can't. No, no, the river has it, no. No, 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 no the river has it. it. What remains unsaid speaks volumes about the dark secrets that Sam and Johnny must share. Hearing them talk so casually about political violence, even cracking jokes, was a mad, surreal experience. And I felt drained afterwards. Oh, fucking hell. Mad dog. I mean, it says it all, really, doesn't it? Now, I'm just, um, I was very interested to see what, what the relationship was like. And, um, you know, it's obvious they've been through a lot of shit together, these two. Today in Scotland, Sam is determined to make the most of his freedom and live life to the full. Come 
I'm the haunt. <laughs> I have 21 in my cot, so they're well pleased. After years of having to hide the fact he's gay, he's openly embracing his sexuality and wants the world to see a new side to him. Joe! <laughs> Again? 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 How are you doing, buddy? Hi, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hey, thanks. All right, fantastic. The only person I've done, I know that's gay and Ursula is me and him, as far as I know. We're going for a drink and all, like, I work in buddies now. Just come to your reputation, we have to look good. He's an icon, I'm an icon. <laughs> I'm a hate singer. I'm a, I'm a gay icon, so we have. <laughs> Every year he attends gay pride marches around the country and has been welcomed by the gay community. I just believe in equality for everybody. Gays, straight people, black, white, Asian, Indian. You know, we should all be able to live in a multicultural society without prejudice. Lots of people in the gay community up and down this country who knew what I was and they don't judge me, they judge me as I am today. My past is my past. Until the day I die, that will follow me. I can't change it. I can live with what I've done and I can move on. I hope, I hope the rest of the community can move on and the rest of society can move on. There are no winners and losers in Northern Ireland's history. In the battle for hearts and minds, thousands of people lost their lives. Some will never forgive Sam for his actions, nor will they forget. But he wants the world to see as a changed man. His past will never go away, but Sam has an opportunity to make amends for the future. The final chapter in Sam McCrory's life has not yet been written.